Imagine yourself standing at a crossroads of continents, where ancient humans first walked the route from Africa to Eurasia. The Levant is a geographical term that refers to a large area in Western Asia's eastern Mediterranean region, nestled between the Mediterranean Sea and the Arabian Desert. Indeed, the Levantine Corridor is a cradle of humanity. This corridor, a cradle of humankind, has been visited by both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. Its significance is emphasized by the rich fossil record it has left us, which acts as a time capsule, providing us with a glimpse into our ancestors' lives. During the Ice Ages, this corridor served as a vital passageway for our ancestors migrating between Africa and Eurasia. The Levantine Corridor remained accessible as the ice sheets expanded, providing a lifeline in a world otherwise encased in ice. Our species' survival was dependent on this vital link between continents, a link teeming with life and resources. This corridor, however, was more than just a migration route. It was a point of convergence, a species melting pot. It was here that two separate branches of the human family tree, the Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, first met. These gatherings were a tangle of conflict and cooperation, competition and coexistence. And it is in this crucible of interaction that we see the beginnings of what distinguishes us as humans, our ability to adapt, innovate, and survive. The silent witness to the dawn of human civilization, the Levantine Corridor, had set the stage for a remarkable journey of survival, adaptation, and innovation. For more than ten years, a team of scientists has been studying sediments, pollen, and archaeological artifacts near Jordan's ancient ruined city of Petra. The goal was to learn about the environmental conditions that existed during the time of human expansion. According to the researchers, human presence consolidated in the region due to favorable climate conditions. Outside of Africa, the success story of anatomically modern humans began around 100,000 years ago, with well-known sites such as Kafzei and Skull. These early records, however, only show a brief, temporary expansion of the territory into the Levant. According to scientists, permanent settlement of the region dates back only about 43,000 years. Modern humans gradually spread throughout the Levant during the early Armarian Epoch, a first step on their way to Asia and Europe. Climate conditions that were favorable were prerequisites for permanent human settlement. The presence of the so-called Lake Leeson exemplifies this on a large scale. This freshwater lake existed where the Dead Sea now stands. It was, however, much larger in size and carried much more water volume. Only at the end of the last ice age did the majority of the water evaporate, leaving behind the hypersaline Dead Sea we know today. Even on a small scale, scientists were able to identify favorable environmental conditions, geo-archaeological teams investigated the Al Ansab 1 site. Whereas the Wadi Sabra, where the site is located, is heavily shaped by seasonal flash floods today, geomorphological and archaeological investigations revealed that at the time of settlement, the conditions were less erosive and continuously wet, allowing humans to live there. This allowed humans to spread from the Mediterranean coast to the formerly arid Negev desert, and the Jordan Rift Valley's eastern slopes. They hunted gazelles in the open landscape, a prey we found at many sites from this time period. Humans did not spread steadily from Africa to the Levant and then to Europe and Asia. Rather, they first settled in the Levantine Corridor, a coastal strip along the Mediterranean Sea. The region around Al Ansab was thus a stepping stone on Homo sapiens' journey, a journey that did not follow a straight path to the European continent, but was guided by complex interactions between humans and their environment. Long-distance hunting weapons had a significant impact on human evolution because they altered hunting practices and the dynamics between humans and their prey, as well as the diet and social organization of prehistoric hunter-gatherer groups. As a result, the date of invention and spread of these weapons has long been the subject of heated debate within the scientific community. The spear thrower is a weapon designed for throwing darts, 
which are large projectiles that look like arrows and can be up to 2 meters long. Spear throwers are able to throw darts up to 80 meters. Small, elongated, symmetrical objects, also known as bladelets, were mass-produced on site, according to an analysis of stone tools attributed to the Armarian, the first upper Paleolithic culture in the land of the Levant in the Near East, dated approximately 40,000 to 45,000 years ago. Such standardized production is consistent with what archaeologists have previously suggested is associated with the introduction of the bow and arrow. The most common Armarian tool is the Elwood Point, a flint blade or bladelet with an additional, intentional modification, known as a retouch. They are a common variant of shaped spear or arrow tips from the early Upper Paleolithic. According to the new findings, Elwood points in Al-Ansab are the result of attempts to reshape larger, asymmetrical bladelet artifacts to meet the quality standards of the unmodified bladelets, which are small, elongated, and symmetrical. According to the researchers, the Southern Armarian had already completed the technological and cultural shift for the preferred use of small bladelets, which could be used as spear or even arrow tips. Al-Ansab, located about 10 kilometers south of Jordan's well-known ruined city of Petra, is significant because it contains one of the best preserved pieces of evidence of the Armarian techno-complex recorded in an open-air context. The early Upper Paleolithic is recognized as the cultural marker of our species' successful final push into Eurasia. Small, slender, and highly standardized bladelets are thought to be the remains of arrows or throwing spears used to catch ungulates in open steppe environments at the time. Bladelets then demonstrate the beginning of long-range hunting, which is a significant departure from previous hunting practices. The new findings show that, Rather than being mere byproducts, the small bladelets were critical to Homo sapiens' success during the Upper Paleolithic. Because it was standardized and disposable, this adaptable technology likely aided the successful dispersal of our species throughout Europe, allowing groups to travel long distances in unknown territory without relying on large, high-quality raw materials. We have a proliferation of bladelets during the Upper Paleolithic, but their role was not well established yet. Researchers hope that these new findings will change our understanding of the Levant's earliest Upper Paleolithic industry and spur new research into the origins of this behavior, which remained with Homo sapiens until the end of the Paleolithic. Climate change influenced the sequence of Homo sapiens settlement movements in the Levant on their way from Africa to Europe. In the beginning, modern humans settled along the Mediterranean Sea's coast. They only spread out after that, into the Sinai Desert and the eastern Jordanian Rift Valley. If the appearance of mechanically propelled weapons in prehistory is widely regarded as one of the hallmarks of modern human populations advance into Europe, the existence of archery has always been more difficult to trace. Ballistic overlaps between weapons projected with a thruster or a bow have hampered recognition of these technologies in the European Upper Paleolithic. Archery technologies rely heavily on perishable materials such as wood, fibers, leather, resins, and sinew, which are rarely preserved in European Paleolithic sites, making archaeological identification difficult. The flint armatures are the primary evidence for these weapon technologies. Based on the analysis of these stone armatures, the recognition of archery in Africa dates back approximately 70,000 years. Some flint or deer antler armatures suggest the existence of archery in Europe more than 35,000 years ago, but the morphology and hafting modes of these ancient armatures do not allow them to be linked to a distinct mode of propulsion, rendering the possible existence of archery during the European Paleolithic nearly invisible. Um. The data from the Mandarin Cave in Mediterranean France, presented in an article published in Science Advances, greatly expands our understanding of these technologies in Europe, allowing us to push back the age of archery in Europe by more than 40 millennia. The research is based on the functional analysis of thousands of flint artifacts from the same archaeological level that revealed the earliest modern human occupation on the European continent. This extremely rich level, attributed to the Neronian culture, attests to Homo sapiens occupations dating back to the 54th millennium, 
and is sandwiched between numerous Neanderthal occupations that occupied the cave before and after the modern human installations. Excavation of the Neronian settlement phases uncovered over 1,500 flint points. According to their findings, a significant number of them were used as armatures for bow-propelled arrows. The very small size and, more specifically, the small width of these armatures, 30% of which weigh only a few grams, allows us to rule out any other mode of ballistic propulsion for these very small weapons. If, as a result of this research, archery in Europe and, more broadly, throughout Eurasia makes a remarkable leap back in time, it also sheds light on Neanderthal weaponry. The study shows that Neanderthals, Neronian modern humans contemporaries, did not develop mechanically propelled weapons, such as bows or thrusters, and instead continued to use their traditional weapons based on the use of massive spear-shaped points thrusted or thrown by hand, requiring close contact with their game. These two populations' traditions and technologies were thus profoundly different, demonstrating a remarkable objective technological advantage to modern populations during their expansion into the European continent. The authors, however, place this debate in a much broader context in which technical choices cannot be limited solely to the cognitive capacities of different human populations, referring to the weight of traditions within these Neanderthal and modern human populations as well as ethologies that may have been profoundly divergent between them. Neanderthals, in fact, lacked projectile weapons. According to new research on prehistoric weapons, Neanderthals created sophisticated weapons and tools, possibly including the first sticky adhesive, but they lacked the projectile weapons that early humans possessed. According to a new study of Neanderthal anatomy, they lacked projectile weapons like bows and arrows, which may have put them at a disadvantage against early modern humans, who had more advanced weapons. The lack of technology, combined with climate change and competition from arrow-shooting humans, may have contributed to the extinction of the Neanderthals. While no one claims that modern humans used projectile weapons against Neanderthals, it is possible that they did at times. Scientists compared Neanderthal fossils to prehistoric and modern human shoulder and elbow bones. When engaging in overhead throwing activity, such as throwing a baseball or spear, the movement arm of the muscles increases, giving the throw more strength and velocity. In fact, modern athletes, such as baseball pitchers and American football quarterbacks, frequently exhibit a characteristic backward displacement at the shoulder joint. Because most people have a preferred throwing arm, only one joint usually shows this. This distinguishing skeletal feature was discovered in early modern European fossils but not in Neanderthals. Neanderthals most likely threw spears over short distances by hand, but it's possible that they never invented a way to propel spears or other projectiles over long distances. Perhaps their short, squat body shape, with short and massive limbs, made throwing based hunting technology unsuitable. However, Neanderthals are thought to have developed a significant technological innovation that changed weapon making for thousands of years. Bitumen, a tar like substance, was recently discovered on sharpened stone points associated with Neanderthals who lived in Syria 70,000 years ago, according to archaeologists. Bitumen served as an adhesive, allowing the Neanderthals to haft points to wooden handles. Bows and arrows were most likely the weapons of choice when modern humans migrated to Europe from Africa 40,000 years ago. He stated that they are still popular among many Africans today. Nobody in Africa uses tear throwers, and spears are primarily used for warfare and hunting large game such as elephants, rhinos and hippos. Instead, almost everyone in Africa uses bows and arrows for hunting, fishing, and warfare. The story of Neanderthal evolution will be told in a new light as a result of this discovery. Neanderthals did not only find refuge in Europe, from which they occasionally spread into West Asia. Indeed, lateral exchange was far greater in Eurasia, and the Levant represents a critical starting point, or at the very least a bridgehead, for this process. The Levantine Corridor has been a breeding ground for diverse human species, from the towering Amud-1 Neanderthal, 
the tallest of its kind, to the early Homo sapiens of Skull and Kafte. The caves that dot this landscape have stood silent witnesses to the ebb and flow of human evolution. Their walls tell stories of survival, adaptation, and innovation as our forefathers braved the elements, honed their tools, and laid the groundwork for our continued existence.